Welcome one and everyone to Scotch and Smoke Rings episode 396. I am your friendly neighborhood Oxhorn here as always with my suspender set to maximum stun. Got a great show for you today. We are going to play my railroad character again today. <clears throat> and today we will be doing the Boston After Dark line of railroad quests. Let me tell everyone on Discord that I'm streaming. I am streaming live on both YouTube and Twitch, and I have your chat uh, right in front of me so that I can read both the both the Twitch and the YouTube chat. So feel free to chat on whichever platform you wish. And I'm also uh, on Discord. I'm looking at my Discord server in the general channel. So if you'd like to communicate with me on there, you are welcome to. Matt Darrow says, hey, Oxron, I love your great videos. Thank you, Matt. Pleasure to have you on the program today. Explosive Gaming says, hello, and Ad Victorium. Ad Victorium, good sir. Ghost Wookie says, what will you be drinking today? Today, great question, we will be drinking some 12-year-old aged single malt scotch whiskey, Glenfiddich. This is a very fine scotch, uh, which uh, I am happy to be drinking with you today. So, cheers. Make sure I got all that water out of there. There you go. Let's make it a large one today. Kakito says, does, does this game ever get boring for you? No. I mean, even if it did, I would still continue to make these videos. It's not like... I'm going to stop if I ever get bored. But uh, in honesty, no, it's it, it doesn't get boring for me because, frankly, I enjoy being good at things. I'm not saying I'm the best Fallout 4 player, but I've been doing it for so long that I understand it. I get the modding. I get level creation. I understand how to play a variety of builds. And uh, that's comfortable for me. And I like making content with games that I'm comfortable with. This is why I'm still so kind of intimidated by uh, eh, Mass Effect Andromeda. Wow. That I... Sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm just amazed. <laughs> Here I am getting sidetracked. I'm, I'm watching the, the ice melt and the water is... You can see the layers of the water from the ice going down into the scotch. And I'm like, oh, isn't that... In oh, that's right. I'm live on the internet right now. Okay. Cheers, ladies and gentlemen. Bottoms up. Chin chin. What was I saying? This happens to me all the time. What was I saying? I was talking about Mass Effect Andromeda. I'm anxious about it. Is anyone else anxious about Mass Effect Andromeda? Because everybody keeps asking me, Oxhorn, what game are you going to do next? Um, and they'll say, hey, what are you going to do when you run out of Fallout 4 content to, to make videos about? And the answer to that question is, I will never run out of Fallout content to do. Because I've got how many different games? Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, and then of course Fallout 1 and 2, and Fallout Tactics. All of which I have made zero content about. And I could sit here and create content forever. So never fear. I'm not going anywhere. But that said... I do like the idea of doing content for new games. And the game that I have been interested in is Mass Effect Andromeda. Because it's science fiction, first person, open world. Yeah, you can see why I'm interested in it. Um, but I've been watching some of the early release gameplay. And I'm really anxious. Because I can't get into a new game unless I can care about the characters. It's hard. I mean, you've seen all of my lore videos. I go in depth into the lore. I explore every single corner. I take notes. I try to understand the story. And then I want to create content based on that for all of you. And if I can't care about the characters, then I'm just not going to have any motivation to do any lore content for the game. Um, and everything that I've seen from Mass Effect Andromeda has been... I mean, the game has reminded me less of an open world MMO so far and more of like um, 
What, what do they call them these days? Bro shooters? Is that the technical term? Right there, uh, the game is more focused on giving you the most complex way of of combat. And I understand that combat is an important part of these games. You have to have an interesting combat system to make it a game. I, I get that. I totally do. But not at the expense of story. Good games have excellent gameplay and excellent content. Games that have no... Or, or excellent story. Games that have no excellent story are either multiplayer games where you really don't need it, or they're forgettable. So, I'm excited about Mass Effect Andromeda. I want to buy it. I want to try it out. I'm going to try producing content for it. But the ball is in the air. Will Mass Effect Andromeda have an amazing story? Will it be engaging? And will my audience enjoy it? That book has yet to be written. We've got a great video, and by we, I mean I. I've got a great video planned for you tomorrow. I'm not going to uh, spill the beans about it just yet, but <clears throat> there's a new mod on the Nexus that is a new horror adventure. And I've been filming that video for tomorrow. I want to do a review on that mod. And so I went through the mod today in preparation for publishing it tomorrow. And it's pretty creepy. <laughs> it's a pretty creepy mod. Uh, it, it's a great little adventure. And it actually makes sense in the world, too. So I'm really excited to share that with you all tomorrow. And then this weekend, I'm going to be busy because I'm working on a lot of new content for this weekend. I'm working on... I'm not going to spill the beans. I, I want to talk about everything I'm doing, but I'm not going to. You know what? I'm here to drink scotch and smoke cigars. Cheers, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we are smoking a La Aurora Corojo. I have smoked through all of my E. Leons, and I am now left with some Corojo Belicosos. Random Games says, oh my god, I uh, actually got to a live stream. This is my first time you're awesome. Thank you for your content. I'm just glad you're here, good sir. Pleasure to have you on the program. Uh, Lord Mogul says, I would like to see one in Europe or maybe in Louisiana or Kansas if we stay in the United States. I also would like to see a Fallout game uh, in one of those places. I think that a new Fallout game is more likely to stay within the continental United States, except for Alaska. I do think it's possible to get to Alaska. So I should say, I do think that the Fallout games will stay within the United States simply because of the whole retro futurism theme, which is very 1950s and 60s Americana. If you go somewhere else, you're not going to have that same vibe. You're going to have that infused with whichever culture you go to, which is kind of kind of break the feel of the Fallout universe. Um, as interesting as it would be to explore China, for example, or uh, Great Britain to go across the, the pond, and see what's going on over there. I, I'm curious about it. But I don't think that they'll have a, a game there. Bastion is thick. Spelled with two C's. Says, I think if we go to Alaska, it'll be the same way as we did in Fallout 3. Or no, that was Adeptuous. That was Adeptuous. He says, a game in, Anch in Anchorage would be really cool. Man, your messages go by so quick. Uh, I agree. I would love to go to Anchorage. Anchorage has... Uh, had such a it's had such a prominent place in Fallout lore ever since Fallout 3 and beyond but they put a lot of attention into it in Fallout 3 with Liberty Prime and then again of course in Fallout 4 because of Liberty Prime uh, that it would be fascinating to explore w uh, wouldn't it be great to see ruins that are not ruins from the nuclear apocalypse but are ruins from huge epic battles between the Chinese and the Chinese communists, and the American capitalists. That'd be great. All right, uh, nobody talked to me about matches. I don't want to hear anything about matches. I realize I'm not getting into it. Don't say anything about matches. Today I'm lighting this thing with a butane lighter. Matches be darned. Sparky says, Fallout in Anchorage with the ability to sail 
to eastern Russia. That would be cool, but that's a far greater distance than you would think. Like, it looks like a very small distance when you look at a globe. But it's... But in real life, it's... I mean, you yes... You can see from one country to the other on a perfect crystal clear day with no weather. It's possible. It's still a very long way to sail. Is, is, it, is it the same distance between Massachusetts and Maine? Because after all, we go from the Commonwealth to Far Harbor. Oh, I don't know. Halo Beast says, you know, Ox, a wooden match is better. Doggone hippies with your communist propaganda. <laughs> Hi, Ox. Railroad handshake anyone. Well, the railroad... <laughs> I mean, Deacon says in passing... That he wishes there was a railroad handshake. He says that as you're walking towards the switchboard for your first mission. Today we're going to be doing the Boston After Dark quest, which is when you get to meet uh, uh, Old Man Stockton from the railroad. So probably not a whole lot of combat. Uh, sorry, probably not a whole lot of combat, but we will be listening to a lot of interesting lore. For those of you who have not done the Railroad Quest, it should be fascinating. Emperor Funky says, <clears throat> Mass Effect Andromeda looks all right, but the character models are a bit ridiculous. Uh, yeah. Honestly, I think that's mainly a problem with the female lead. The, the sister... I don't know her name. She has an interesting face. It's hard to... It's just... It, I'm getting a lot of uncanny valley when looking at the female protagonist for Mass Effect. And that's what a lot of people are complaining about. Emperor Funky says, I've always thoroughly enjoyed Mass Effect, but Andromeda will possibly be meh. It looks beautiful, but will the story hold up? to the previous three. That's pretty much the only question I want to know the answer to for that series. Well, never fear. I guarantee that if it's any good at all, I will do my best to ferret out the best stories and produce content for it. That's going to be my goal when I get my hands on a copy at the end of this month. He then says, lol, Mass Effect 3's ending bombed so hard they had to release an alternate ending. I heard that. I haven't played any of the Mass Effect games, and I'm not going to, because they say you don't have to play any of the Mass Effect games to be able to walk right in and understand Andromeda, and I'm counting on that because I frankly do not have time to play other games while producing content for Fallout 4. But, uh, but that's what I'm hoping. Deuce Vault says, Zoxhorn, I've been following you. It flew off the screen. I've been following you ever since Rothelmau. I was just wondering, do you see yourself getting bored with Fallout 4 anytime soon? Now, now I actually touched on that at the beginning of, of the show. Uh, I don't. I don't see myself getting bored with Fallout 4 at all. I have a map of the Commonwealth up on my computer at all times of the day. And as I produce content, I tick off a new place on the map. And you should see my map. It's about half done. That's right, I've been doing a video every single day for almost a year, and the Commonwealth is only half done. That doesn't even count all of the character builds and other lore videos that I could make. And it doesn't count Fallout Tactics, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 3, Fallout 1, or Fallout 2. So trust me, there's a lot for me to make, and I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. Do Oxhorns dream of Fallout 4? <laughs> this is adeptuous. <laughs> What's do androids dream of electric sheep? Yeah, I do dream of Fallout 4. Slenderman says if you had to choose a favorite faction, which would it be? 
Well, you do have to choose a favorite faction in the game. That's part of the game. Choosing your favorite faction. That's the, the major plot. Um, so, <clears throat> but my favorite faction is the Minutemen. I can, uh, I can embrace their cause. They've got a good cause, which is everyone. Everyone is their cause. The betterment of everyone on Earth, or in the Commonwealth at least, is the cause of the Minutemen, whereas the causes for all of the other factions are so individualized and niche, suiting a small group of people compared to the greater masses, that it's, um, it's not my choice. But I've played a game ending with every single faction so that I could go through that experience. And there are all really interesting stories. Quart of Milk says, just started following you and I love your videos. Fallout is my favorite game series. It's mine too. I really enjoyed it. I played Fallout 3 when it came out years ago, 2008. And that was my first Fallout game. And uh, I was hooked. I couldn't make any content on it because I was so busy with my Oxhorn stuff at the time, which was World of Warcraft machinima, that um, I just didn't have any time or energy to create Fallout content, but I wanted to at the time. And then after my World of Warcraft videos, I had to transition to my career where I focused on marketing for many years until I finally came back last year. And now I get to do Fallout content. Mm. Oh. oh, it's such a good scotch. Soothes the soul. Grant Stacy says, Oxford, have you ever considered making any props or real life stuff from Fallout? I haven't. I have a Pip Boy that was gifted to me as a Christmas gift. I showed it off on the program. Um, I've never really been into cosplay. I can appreciate cosplay and I can appreciate prop making. This is not something that I do. Santastic says, Fallout 4 builds, please. I really like the Metal General. Uh, never fear, I do have more in mind. I'm go going through a backlog of content. I, I feel like I've actually got way too much content to produce. I, it, I, I laugh anytime someone says, oh, what are you, you going to do when you run out of content? Because I don't see an end in sight. I have more ideas than I have time to make them. And that's with me publishing a new video every single day. So I've been working on the Roxbury area. Today we did the maze, the Roxbury Funhouse, in uh, in the uh, Milton parking garage. We still have the Metro Station, the nearby estate town, and the General Hospital to do, and then that'll finish off the Roxbury area. Uh, but then there are videos that I've promised, including more character profiles. I did a character profile of Kate, and that was well-received, and I've, there are a lot more... NPCs that I could do profiles of. <clears throat> so I'm going to be doing those. And then uh, I've got my long requested and long awaited video breakdown of the Minutemen. I did a video on every single faction so far, why the Institute is evil, why the Brotherhood of Steel is evil, why the Railroad is good but flawed, and I have the Minuteman video left to do. And that is one of my highest priorities. So I'm working really hard to kind of get all of that content done. Once done, I've got some great Fallout 4 builds in mind that I would love to do, and then a ton of other stuff. I've got to do the USS Constitution. I've got uh, videos on the uh, Children of Adam to do, Automaton, and the Robco Sales Center. I've got a lot of stuff to do. Never fear. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I had some guy comment on the uh, episode of the show that I published last week and said, Oxhorn, this is false advertising. You promised me smoke rings. This is called scotch and smoke rings. And I didn't see any smoke rings. I did blow smoke rings last week. I did. <clears throat> but I'm happy to blow more. That's why I'm here. The breeze. It's not my fault. It's the breeze out the window. 
Stop it. Wind, obey my commands. Great. Of course, this is what happens. I gear up, I start bragging about my smoke rings, and then I can't blow any because of the blasted wind. Let's try this, try this again. A few good ones in there. They don't last long because I have a heater over here. Oh no, I turned it off. I was gonna say I had a heater over here blasting hot air at me, pushing the smoke up, and then an open window over here in early March having all of this cold air pushing down. But no, my heater's not on, so I was about to lie. All for 17 says we didn't do a smoke ship last week. Did we not? He who never sleeps says, I don't see how he wears that shirt. Those things are the absolute worst things ever. This is a seersucker button up shirt, my friend. Seersucker. It's not even summer and I'm wearing seersucker because it's that comfortable. If you have never worn a seersucker shirt, Sorry, <laughs> I, was, I, was, <clears throat> I was about to, I, I realized how ridiculous what I was about to say was. If you have never worn a seersucker shirt, you have not truly lived. Oh my gosh. Pope Waffles says, Oxhorn, what is your opinion on using pipe tobacco? I enjoy it. I, uh, in the early stages of Scotch and Smoke Rings, in the early, early episodes, seasons one through three or so, I uh, exclusively smoked pipes. I have a large pipe tobacco collection on my wall on display, and um, I exclusively uh, smoked pipe t uh, tobacco. But the problem with pipe tobacco, at least when I smoke pipe tobacco, is it's really hard to pack the pipe properly so that you don't get tongue bite. The nice thing about a cigar is it's already packaged for you, which means you're gonna have the optimal smoking experience, as long as you don't smoke too quickly. Reducing your chance of getting tongue bite. So I haven't smoked a tobacco pipe in quite some time. He who never sleeps says, I hate buttons. The top button chokes me. Well, that's why you leave it unbuttoned. Look, I'm not trying to show off my, my chest hair or anything, but you leave the top button unbuttoned, and then you don't get choked. Dalton Bevin says, hey, Ox, I love your shirt. Thank you. It's a great shirt. Though I ripped it. I need a new one. Robert E. House says, what is tongue bite? <clears throat> tongue, oh, and James Dallas also says, what is tongue bite? Uh, great question. So, when you smoke tobacco, especially pipes and cigars, if you smoke too quickly, it causes the tobacco to get burned. And I know you're burning tobacco, but what I mean is that it burns so quickly that it lets off a lot of acid. There, are, there is a lot of acid in the tar and nicotine that touches your mouth. That acid is not physically hot. It's not really warm to the touch, but the chemicals within it cause burns. And they're not real burns. It's not like you're getting a first degree burn, but it has a burning sensation. It's kind of like burning the roof of your mouth or burning your tongue when eating something too hot. That's kind of what tongue bite feels like. It's sort of a, a, 
twinge. It's a slight twinge. It's not pleasant. And so, to avoid tongue bite, you have to smoke slowly. And with pipes, you have to go the further step of packing the pipe properly and keeping it clean. Uh, Emperor Funky says, sorry, I'm about to talk about an image that none of you can see. But on our Discord server, he's posting an image saying, Ox, this is referring to the Andromeda comments from earlier. It's pretty funny to look at. I know, look, look. I, again, I'm sorry for doing this, but I'm looking at this image of the actual female protagonist compared to one that has been slightly doctored by by someone, and it looks so much better. Like, the one in the game is so goofy looking. I can't explain it. It's uncanny valley is what it is. It's it's too close to, to realism. It's too close to realism so that you kind of go, it's a little off. Three-dimensional art needs to be... It needs to be it needs to have creative license it can't be as close to reality as possible because the closer to reality you get the closer to the uncanny valley you get and the human mind has seen so many other human beings that it notices when something is slightly off and that is unnerving <clears throat> it's unpleasant to see that's why when you do a three-dimensional game you have to make them look good look human but have a unique flair a unique artistic flair about them so that they can be believable as human beings, but they also fit in with their own artistic style. That's a good way to sum it up. Zachary says, hey, Oxhorn, what are your real life special stats? Beard, 10. Suspenders, 9. Derby, 9.5. Scotch, seven. Cigars, six. Those are my special stats. Thank you for sharing the image on YouTube. Or, or is that Twitch? Sorry. That's Twitch. Thank you, Assassin, for sharing the image on Twitch. Wow, it's so weird. <laughs> Yeah, it's so weird. I know it's really rude for me to be talking about images when half of you can't even see them. Shirt 8 says Ravenfall. <laughs> oh, man, I, di I did go on a rant about Seersucker, didn't I? Health 1 says Legate Australis. Oh, burn. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> I think I had that coming though. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> Do you have a day job, says James Wales? I, I did um, until about five months ago. This is now my day job. You guys have been so good to me that I can now do this full time. And for that, I am thankful. <laughs> Christopher Quinn says, how did you get into making video game content from marketing? It was actually the reverse. Uh, when I was in college, this is what I did. I made World of Warcraft Machinima on a different channel. And it was from my success at doing that that I naturally stepped into a marketing role at uh, various companies over the past 10 years. <clears throat> because it wasn't just the technical side of making the videos. I had to be, able to be a good communicator. I had to understand social media. And these things naturally just pointed me towards a marketing position. So I got a degree from the university in history, <laughs> which has nothing to do with what I am doing now. And uh, I ended up being in marketing for many years until now I'm back to making videos. Zombie Gaming says, are you looking at YouTube comments? I am looking at all comments.
YouTube, Twitch, and Discord. Do you play Skyrim as well? Every now and then, I have done Skyrim live streams on this channel. It's not my, um... <clears throat> it's not my favorite game. It's alright. I, I really enjoy it. That said, I haven't delved into the lore of it. I, I finished the primary quest. And, uh, got to, like, level 20. And then I'm, I'm in the middle of doing the Doom Guard. Is that what it's called? Doom Guard? Dawn Guard. I'm doing the Dawn Guard DLC right now. I'm, like... A third of the way through it. And it's fun. But I still really enjoy Fallout. He who never sleeps says, I've never seen Ox without a hat. I wonder what's underneath. Everyone asks him to take off the hat. But see, that only proves that you just don't know me. Because I'm not wearing a hat. This is a natural growth from my head. We each have our burdens to bear. I bear mine here. Notorious says, how do you properly smoke a cigar? You're the expert. Well, I am no expert. I actually did a video on this. I did an entire video, which I published a couple of years ago, on how to smoke a cigar. And uh, every now and then, <laughs> every now and then I'll get some aficionado who leaves a comment and says, that's not how you smoke a cigar. And he'll write a 15 paragraph letter about how you properly smoke a cigar. And I'm like, mm. but basically you, you don't smoke it too fast. You smoke, you take a puff every 30 to 45 seconds or so. That ensures that the cherry, the hot red part that's burning, doesn't get too hot. That's going to prevent tongue bite. And then you drink a lot of liquids. MC the Popcorn Pig says, Ox, have you heard of Subnautica? I have. I've played it. In fact, I've actually made videos about Subnautica. Some of the earliest videos on this channel are Subnautica gaming videos, where I showed off some of the underwater bases that I built. So if you're interested, you can check out my Subnautica videos from way back. Have you ever been to Alaska? Asks Nightwing. Yes, I used to live in Alaska. My earliest memories are from Alaska. I was born here in Washington State, <clears throat> but when I was very young, less than a year old, my parents moved to Alaska because my father uh, became a commercial fisherman, and I lived the first five years of my life there before moving back here. Fond memories of Alaska. Tucker Film says, when did you start the YouTube? Well, I have an old channel, an old YouTube channel that I started way back in 2003, 2004, something like that. But, but this channel I started in 2011. But I didn't start actively uploading daily content to it until April of last year. Have you ever been to Seattle? Yes, I live in Seattle. This is where I live. I am in Seattle right now at this very moment. <laughs> Some of your comments are just so ridiculous. I'm sorry. <laughs> but they tickle me. Okay, uh, let's get to the, sh the game. But before we do, I had somebody say that I forgot to do a smoke ship last week. And if that's the case, I, I apologize. Sorry, hold on. I'm getting ash everywhere. Uh, so if, if that's the case, I apologize. Let's do a smoke ship now. Give me your thoughts. What kind of ship would you like to see? 
Let me know in the chat, either on Discord or on Twitch or on YouTube. Give me your ideas and I will do my very best to create a ship for you, using nothing but the smoke in this mouth, combined with the majesty in these lungs. <clears throat> the USS Enterprise, says Kvile2000. <laughs> Adeptua says I actually blew air into my eyes. Sorry. Saw dust there. The USS Constitution says Nightwing. What is a smoke ship? Says James Bond. The Hobbit. Come on, you know Gandalf? A battleship. A galley. A laser disc player. A chair. The USS Constitution. A Spanish galleon. A relationship. <sighs> The Bismarck, a Spanish galleon. The Assassin's Creed ship. Vegas Stratosphere. The Yangtze submarine. Spaceship Yamato. Wave Grazer, says Mr. Blonde Guy. Aw. That was the name of the ship in my novel. Thank you for reading it. The USS Constitution, a vault Tech smoke ship? Is vault Tech a ship? Tugboat, the Flaming Bridwin. Whoa. Star-Lord's ship. <laughs> My girlfriend's icy cold heart. Ship! Not hearts. Ships. Um. I like the flaming Pridwin. Let's do the Pridwin on fire. As if it had just been blown to smithereens. Ad Victorium, ladies and gentlemen. Ad Victorium. Here we go. Pay close attention. The ship will only exist before your eyes for the briefest of moments. Here we go. Whoa! Oh, man, did you see it? For the briefest of moments before your very eyes was the Pridwin in all of its glory on fire. Devastation dripping in flames to the ground below. I know, sometimes I amaze even myself. I don't know how I do it. It's a gift, ladies and gentlemen. Can you truly explain genius? I can't. All right, let's get on with the program, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> MC the Popcorn Pig took a picture. Yes, he did. All right, uh, uh, what was I doing? That's right, I was getting ready to play Fallout 4. This is the game we are playing today, is not? It is. All right. Give me a moment while the game boots up. Hopefully I don't have to download a patch from Steam or some crazy nonsense. <laughs> Infamous Wanderer caught it. Cut it on film. Okay. I'm going to turn off my music while we get this going. Just because I want to play the Fallout 4 music. Um, there we go. Oh, man. There we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are, uh, right where we left our hero wine, here in the railroad headquarters. We have a quest to do. This is Boston After Dark. Boston After Dark. Retrieve the dead drop. Meet... Okay, go to, go to Bunker Hill. Old Man Stockton. All right, let's turn on some music here. I usually turn off the music when doing videos so that I can splice it in later.
All right, Bunker Hill it is. Let's, uh... Looks like I'm already close enough. Oops. All right, here we go. Fastest way out of the railroad. What? I forgot this existed. Security's too good. Oh, I can't pick that. Oh, fusion core. Deacon's with me, right? Yeah, come on, buddy, let's go. I love Deacon. He's so great. Someone's got this locked. Yeah, at least one good one in there, right? Ox, have you ever been to Miami? Back when I was a kid, this was in the late 80s. <sighs> Miami was a different place in the 80s. Glass on the beach. Needles all over the place. It was a horrible place. I hear, however, that they've cleaned it up very well since then. Late 80s, early 90s. I remember my parents freaking out because I almost stepped on a broken bottle. Okay, let us let us find Bunker Hill. So my character is getting stronger. I just recently got the second rank of big leagues, making me a force worth reckoning. But I am still a little crunchy. Like, uh, th was that a raider? I think that was a raider running out there. Deacon, you costume changing guy. <laughs> he was bald and in a t-shirt and jeans just a moment ago. And now he's in a Wastelander outfit. All right. I'll probably be quick saving a lot because I'm probably going to die a lot. And just letting you know ahead of time. But it's time to go north. What is the point? What is the point in choosing the only stealth character, companion, that you can get if he's going to get noticed by every single raider we pass through? What the hell was that? Are they shooting at... They're not shooting at me. I'm still hidden. Look at that. They're shooting at Deacon. Almost got away with that. Oh, ho! <laughs> but he took care of his own. Look at that. He took his, he took his pompadour wig off. To shoot the raider. Gosh. Companions in this game are so funny. Junkie. Oh. I haven't done this. Um, I haven't done this quest yet, have I? I need to do a video about this random encounter. Oh, it's inventory. Uh, junkie's note. This is the random encounter I haven't done yet. Dealer said there was a big stash of chems up at National Park headquarters. Get them, and we'd be set for months. Or we could sell them to buy something stronger. Look for the stash of chems in National Park headquarters. That's going to be... Right around there. But first things first, we are the railroad. Let us do railroad quests. I can't forget about my cigar. Last time I did a live stream, I got so involved in playing Fallout 4 that I let my cigar go out. It took me like five hours to smoke the thing. Okay, I think we're okay. We're coming around Bunker Hill. Diamond City thinks it's got a lock on trade in the Commonwealth, but watch out for Bunker Hill. It has a lot of potential. I agree. If someone builds defenses like that, they're building it for a damn good reason. Deacon, you're such a chatterbox. Oh no, it's Edward Deacon. Hello, Edward. What have you got for me today? Excuse me. 
You there. We need to have a conversation. Cabot, you say? You've got my attention. I'm always looking for people who know how to handle themselves in dangerous situations. From what I hear, you may fit the bill. What's my charisma? My charisma's not very high. I don't mind danger, so long as I get paid well enough. You'll get paid for starting rate, like everybody else. Failed. If you turn out to be as useful as you claim, then we can talk about a raise. I didn't claim way, anything. I'm Edward Deegan. You'll mostly be working for me, but you'll need to talk to my boss first. His name is Jack Cabot. He likes to personally interview everyone I hire. He's careful like that. Come down to Cabot House in Beacon Hill and ask to talk to Jack. I'll let him know you're coming. Thanks, Eddie. You can go all the way to the top. Quite a view up there. Deacon, you chatterbox, my goodness. Well, let's find this old man Stockton guy. Old man Stockton. Hello there, old man Stockton. I'm half tempted to join the railroad with all this shit. I don't know. People gotta do something, Dad. When did you start to care about sense? These guys. Not that. The railroad is the only one standing up to the Institute. So Harry's wife. Kitten. That settlement Lucas Miller was talking about? Where is he? White. Way over there. <clears throat> Mark, it's the white building with all the fancy columns. Always someone doing trade in there. Thanks, Kessler. I guess she only talks to me, challenges me if I'm from the Miniman, if I come from the Miniman. But I'm here to talk to Old Man Stockton. Let's go. Hey. Welcome, my friend. Might I ask, do you have a Geiger counter? It Mine might be is safe. in the shop. Just you. Maybe. I was expecting someone a bit more armed. You're with our mutual friends, yes? That's right. It's always nice to make new friends. You've just joined, haven't you? All you need to know is this is the first stop for all our new packages. So maintaining proper security here and preventing any unnecessary delays is crucial. Okay. Why do all packages start here? If you don't know the answer to that already, I'm not certain I should tell you. Calm down, old man. I don't have the charisma to pass it, so I'm not even going to try. A trader always has to move his merchandise efficiently. And we're all about making good trade routes. Exactly. My current package has been in my possession far too long. I'm supposed to deliver the package to some place nearby. But raiders have complicated matters. So, if you could... Facilitate delivery. Hmm. I can do that. It's scheduled to be a nighttime delivery. So, if you could clear out the undesirables before dawn, <laughs> we can do this tonight. Sounds fun. See you soon. Now, raiders, I can handle... Secure the rendezvous point. Um, that's right, that's the church, isn't it? It's been a while. Yes. Right, before I go, let's get that perk magazine. Up we go. Up, up and away. Ah. It's a beautiful moonlit night. Yes. There we go. Oh, I'm gonna fall. Deacon, out of the way, buddy. Gosh. getting dizzy okay quick save now i need to go that way wait what is what is am i tracking more than one quest i am there we go that's what i needed let us do this
And I have to go circle all the way around. That's right. Okay. <sighs> all right, let's go through this. Gotta go to the church. I'm gonna crouch down because you never know. Oh, look at Ritter! Ooh, incidental music. Why am I not jumping over there? Oh, that was a bummer. I thought I would teleport over there. Deacon, stay behind me, please. Shooting at me. Yeah. Ow! He is! Oh, he's right behind me! How did I miss this guy? I've got a crippled arm and everything. How many stim packs do I have? Six, no, 25. Let's eat some food instead. How about that? Although that's not going to repair my arm. Okay. Church around the corner. No, no, I went the wrong way. This way. Okay. Here we go. Then I got to escort H222, I believe. I used a lot of this footage in my video on the railroad. Who lurks? In the shadows. It is me, Haley. <laughs> Watch me zip around. Oh man. They call me Fast Lightning because I'm fast, like lightning. This is my first melee character, by the way. So I'm having a lot of fun with Blitz. It's great. Do you see that? Oh, beauty. Okay. Now I got to wait for Old Man Stockton at H222. There he is. Hey there, buddy. Where are you going? Where are you going? Hi. Everything looks clear. This is H222. H2, here's the person I talked to you about. Nice to meet you, H2. Another person actually happy to meet me. This'll take some getting used to. Remember what I told you, H2. I'll fire up the signal. Sounds good. You fire it up while we get some lore from H2. Hey, H2. From what I've been told, it's probably safer if I don't say anything. I don't want to put you I'm in any more danger. Go. Keep H2 safe. Someone will be here shortly. 
I eat danger for breakfast. <laughs> Tastes like chicken. Chicken? I'm sorry, I, I don't understand. But I wanted to thank you. This world is poor guy overwhelming. But people like you make me feel better about coming here. I have a lot of questions, especially about the Institute. That's precisely what Mr. Stockton said I shouldn't talk about at all. Ah, oh, I won't be able to pass the charisma check. I keep forgetting to take great men tests before talking. If I understand more about the Institute, I may be able to help you and others better. I'm sorry. There we go. I don't know much about the Institute. I worked the maintenance tunnels every day for as long as I can remember. Poor the synth. only time I spoke to anyone was to acknowledge scientists' orders and very rarely to other synths. I've talked more in the past few days than I have my entire life. You worked with scientists? Yes, at least that's what we called them. My only interaction with them was to receive orders on what to clean. I would acknowledge my task and occasionally ask for necessary clarification, but that's really it. You learn a lot about how the Institute treats synths from this encounter. This one encounter gives us the lion's share of how they actually treat their synths. It's fascinating. What do you know about the rest of the Institute? I heard there was a concourse above the tunnels. It's huge and big and green with, with many synths, but they're watched more carefully by the scientists. Mr. Stockton said very few synths from that section ever escape. What's life like for a synth in the Institute? Synths are expected to behave like machines. You await instructions, you execute instructions, you perform basic self-maintenance. Anything else is considered defective. And then the SRB comes. You mentioned the SRB. They're the ones that watch us to make sure we're not defective, to make sure we don't run. Since that get noticed, just disappear. I don't know where they go. So you know where the Institute is, right? Stockton already asked me that. I don't know. I really don't. He says no since no. How or why that is, I can't say. Skylar G says, Oxhorn, what does scotch taste like? Scotch tastes like early morning dew on freshly cut grass. It tastes like the purest snow drip off from a glacier. It tastes like warm sunlight on a summer's day. Oxhorn brand scotch. <clears throat> How did you escape the Institute? The only thing I'll say is I had help. Sorry. It's the one thing I won't talk about. Goodbye, H2. Thank you. You have no idea how nice it is just to talk to someone. Yeah! Oh, that's right! Hi, high rise! <laughs> that's, that's, that scared me, man. Easy there. Don't shoot. Wanderer. Right? That's right. Oh, man, Deacon. Still with the same old face? What? It's been three whole months. You're getting slow. I keep meaning to go to the face doctor, but who has the time? Right? I heard about you. Walked the Freedom Trail, cleared out Switchboard. Glad you joined the team. Oh, we've already gone. Do I really need to do the, the call sign? We've already gone so far. Do you have a Geiger counter? Right, you are. Mine is in the shop. Oh, well, at least I got a, got a positive affinity boost from Deacon. Let's take a look at our friend. Hey, you. You okay? A little rattled, but I've never been better. The other man, he said I shouldn't talk too much. He told you right, H2. 
You'll need a real name and a new face, but we'll get to that. Oh, listen. There's more than raiders behind me. I'm afraid we need a little more help. Oh, dear. What do you mean, a new face? We gotta file off the serial numbers on new arrivals. Make it hard for the Institute to find them. Most sense going for a brand new set of memories as well. You know, for that extra protection and all. But first, we gotta get them to safety. We need to get to Ticonderoga's safe house, my home. A lot of sense fresh off the boat crashed there until we smuggled them out of the Commonwealth. I just thought of something. So, they do... They do facial reconstructive surgery on synths but synths are engineered beings made with human DNA I'll grant you but if they go to any wasteland doctor to get a, f a face surgery those people are not going to have synthetic material to replace their face with they'll likely reuse bits and pieces of the existing face and supplement with human tissue does that mean that synth tissue and human tissue is compatible? Or is this something that we just need to suspend our disbelief for? Interesting. All right. Ticonderoga, here we come. I'll lead the way. Okay, if I recall, this walk is tricky. And I can't sneak because I got to keep up with high rise, so... Let's just hope that I can get through this. Oh, doggone it, there's another one. I love Blitz! It's so much fun! Ooh, but I am squishy. I am taking damage. Who's shooting at me? Oh man. What? Oh, there's another one! I wasn't running. Nice, Deacon. Of course, we go right by Monsignor Plaza. I can't jump and <laughs> I can't do, I can't I can't jump and swing. Oh, I'll say that. All right, goes. Don't run off without me. I got to loot. That's not even worth picking up. Boss. Sorry, sorry. Calm down. Where'd they go? Oh, man. Oh, they're back there. Okay. Following you, High Rise. Lead on. Had to take care of some business. Oh, no. Super Mutants. Oh, no. A nuclear one. Oh, no. He's going to blow up right on me. Super mutant suicider. They always get you, don't they? Let's try this again. How am I going to kill a, a super mutant suicider as a melee character? Oh, let's try. I got to clear up on Singer Plaza. That wasn't in the script. Ha <laughs> ha 
All right, let's do this. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, no, there's another one. I think. I oh. Nope, I'm all right. I'm almost done, though. Lost le a lot less effective that time around, wasn't I? Um, let's get some food. I've got some more food, don't I? Let's try. Salisbury steak. Who are you talking about? Crazy lady? I have no idea how I'm going to get past these super, uh, super mutants. Oh, looks like we don't have to. We're going a different way now, high rise. Okay, I'll take it. Oh, there are more up there to the left. No, nope, we're good. That's it right there. We can catch up at Tycon. We just gotta make it there alive first. We are there. And we're here. All in the night's work for you agent types. Huh. So, is this a normal operation? More than I'd like. Sometimes I can sneak our friends through all by my lonesome. But other times it's like the damn raiders are holding a convention. Working with you made it a whole lot easier. If you ever need grub, Bullets are just a power nap. Take the elevator up to Tycon. The house is yours. And Deacon, try not to give the rookie too much shit. Deacon may be a terrible liar, but it always pays to have him on your side. <laughs> Later. Hey, H2. Mr. Stockton said I shouldn't say anything. Stop being boring, H2. Great, let's take a tour of Ticonderoga. <clears throat> Just because it's one of those places in the game that you never go to unless you do the railroad quests. What's a Vault 81 jumpsuit doing in here? What's a Vault 81 jumpsuit doing in Ticonderoga? All right, let's go upstairs, see if there's anything interesting to loot up here. Nope. Elevator music. Aw. And here we are, Ticonderoga. The railroad music is so great. I can't sleep on that mattress, huh? Good old Tycon. High rise is one of the best. Yes, I can cook up all my meat. Can you build me a mansion? Casa del Deacon. <laughs> del Deacon? I'm not gonna build you a mansion from a cooking station.
All right. Ooh, a fat man. I'm not going to need that with this build. Oh, and I can't open up the fridge. Look at all that purified water, and I can't get it. Bubkiss. All right, let's take a tour of Tycon. What's upstairs? We got some scents hanging out. You're from HQ, right? Railroad agents. Deathclaw hand? Why did I mark a deathclaw hand? That's way too heavy. I'm not going to carry that. Hey, H2. But thank you. Thank all of you. You're welcome. So polite. I should turn this into my player home. Tycon has everything I need. Of course, I know I shouldn't. It's got weapons, crafting stations, mini nukes, armor stations, everything. Guns and bullets. Maybe I should do the full story of Ticonderoga. Ooh. I need that pre-war money more than anyone. And the stealth boy. I'll take that. Thank you. Uh, I don't want to anger everyone. I'll hack that later. Maybe in a lore video that I do. Man, it's got a chemistry station and everything. I like it here. There's the bed. Hey, High Rise runs a good safe house. I should really do a settlement build that where I create a safe house. That would be a lot of fun. I could build up my Mercer safe house. What magazine was there? That was guns and bullets. Love the view. Anyone know why the vault lunch lunchboxes say Stan? It's like every lunchbox belongs to some guy named Stan. I don't get it. I'm glad I came here first because I was almost about to move all of my belongings to the railroad headquarters. It just, there's not a lot there. I may instead make this a temporary player home. That leads down, I'll explore that in a minute. Let's continue around. Just a bathroom. Ooh, buff out. No fusion cores for me today. That's okay. This is not a fusion core heavy build anyway. I missed something, didn't I? Ah! I did miss something.
Oh well. <laughs> Not much in there anyway. Down we go. Not a lot to loot. Gosh, I expected more to loot. All of these containers are empty, but then again, I don't have the scrounger perk yet. That may be why. I'm so used to playing characters that have high levels of scrounger. Maybe that's why I'm not finding any loot. Hello. Locks really strong. Hmm. Security's too tight. Oh man. Bobkiss. Too low level. That goes back up. All right, so this terminal must unlock this door. And it leads out. All right. Let's go turn in this quest. Frog Raider says, what kind of a railroad character are you stealing all their goods? I'm not stealing. High Rise told me before I entered that I was welcome to any of the supplies they had. I was just partaking in the railroad spoils, is all. Considering all of the help I am going to be giving them in the near future, I figure it's only just. Zoning into downtown Boston always takes forever. My FPS is low. Look at that. I look that way and I'm good. Look that way. Oof. It's because my field of view is so high. Change the field of view, watch this. Let's go back to 80, which is normal field of view. Watch my FPS. Oh, okay. It's not as, not, it's not as dramatic as I thought it would be. Yeah, but that jumps down when I put it back to 100. Right, I could fast travel, but let's walk back. I think that'll be more exciting. I've got quite a ways to go. this oh yeah that's that gift shop golly can I take an admirer lurk we're about to see if I can take a admirer lurk With Deacon serving as a meat shield, this is much easier.
Palowski Preservation. There's Bunker Hill. And then this leads back to the railroad. if I remember correctly. There we go. We the oh. have a battle cry. And there's Pikmin's. Off with his head. Nice. these raiders what what the hey nothing who's there, there now what do you think i don't know jump in a shack yeah you're probably mm -hmm. right Fail at stealthing there. Thank God for Blitz. Success. Is there anything worthwhile in here? Pay more money. I feel like I'm going the long way around. I probably am. It gets farther and farther away as I keep walking. No fear of ghouls here. I already cleared them out. It's weird that they go through all that big hullabaloo when I first get here to crack the code, follow the freedom trail. But then they don't close it back up after I get in. I'm already accessing the rear entrance and they don't close up the main. Tom needs you. He keeps bugging me about it. I guess he's got a Mila for me to do. Hey, Doc. The H222 situation appears to have been resolved satisfactorily. But there's yet more to be done. Since the fall of the switchboard, we ascertained the fate of all the two safe houses. I want you to check on Augusta. Tell me about Augusta. Details away to the dead drop. Have a care. Odds are very good you're walking into something nasty. All right. So sounds good, Doctor. Thank you. So who needs to talk to me? Uh, Tom. 
Where is he? There he is. Excuse me. Dez has given me clearance to set up my atmospheric sensor. Finally, I can prove that the Institute is terraforming the Commonwealth. Eat that can These quests always bother me because they're, so <laughs> they're such a waste of time. I mean, we know that they're not terraforming the atmosphere. Why would the Institute terraform the Commonwealth? It goes back to the big war. Who set off the first A-bomb? The Institute did. They started the whole war to kill everyone except their own diabolical scientists. What? Who set off the first A-bomb, the Institute? Is he referencing something in history that I don't know anything about? Did, did MI, was MIT involved in A-bomb testing before World War II? But what's that have to do with terraforming? Everything, man. You see, humanity didn't kick the bucket like they planned. We're still hanging on. So first step, artificial people come to infiltrate, spy, and salvage the metric tons of gizmos they need. And once they get all the parts they need, whammo! The big atmospheric converter inside Blake Tower starts spewing poison into the stratosphere. Blake Tower? To every last one of us. Give me details. So my sensor, I call Amila, needs to be up high. Real high. Dez forced me to put some cameras and, you know, other low-tech surveillance crap on it to watch the Freedom Trail. Chuck that stuff if you need to. Like, you know, who couldn't spoof a conventional camera, right? We need cameras watching the trail? Look, I engineered the trail markers in cold phrase myself. So anybody comes looking for us, whammo, spotted a mile away. Sure, the cameras could add a little insurance, but discovering the truth about the Institute's real plan is way more important. I got the perfect spot picked out. Set Mila up and let the juicy data pour in. Broken Lego. Or no, no. Uh, Matt says, Ox, yes, MIT was involved. So he's he's referencing MIT and their involvement in the development of, the, of nuclear weaponry and apparently the Manhattan Project. Because MIT became CIT, the Commonwealth Institute of Technology in this fictional universe. So he's pretty much saying that the Institute caused the nuclear apocalypse or was partially involved in it. That's funny. Okay, I got it. That's interesting and worth a video. You see, I never run out of content. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Lots to do. I got to go work on a new video. So, I'm going to end it here. Thank you for joining me for this week's episode of Scotch and Smoke Rings. We had a whole lot of fun doing Boston After Dark. Stay tuned for my video tomorrow morning. We will be reviewing a really fun horror adventure mod. And uh, you'll get a good 30 minutes of me going through this entire mod for you. Uh, and it's going to be a blast. So, stay tuned for that. <clears throat> and then this weekend, I have a lot of really important content that I'm going to be publishing, really longer videos, delving deep into specific characters, so on and so forth. So I hope you will enjoy all of that. Let me go ahead and pull this up. There we go. So thanks for coming to this week's episode of Scotch and Smoke Rings, episode 396. Next week is going to be 397, and we will have a bunch of fun then. Until then, ladies and gentlemen, be sure each and every one of you stays classy.